Hello everyone, my name is Nancy Fiedler and I am so happy to be here to share with you this information about the new Genomi Cutwork Kit. The Cutwork Kit is an add-on program for Digitizer MDX. You can use it with version 4 or version 4.5. So you must have Digitizer MBX version 4 or 4.5. And then you can add this great kit. The kit is going to come with the installation CD, the cutwork needles, a needle holder, as well as an instructional DVD. Now as you can see from the picture, the cutwork needles are color coded. And the reason they're color coded is the sewing machine doesn't necessarily know that you're cutting, it just thinks it's using a sewing needle. And so the embroidery design will give you a color change and then you will know to change to that colored needle. The best part about the cutwork kit is when you assign or draw your cutwork object, it's going to automatically assign the needles in the right place. So you don't even have to worry about what needle's going where, the program will do that. But just a little information about what each needle is. The red needle is a horizontal blade, so it's zero degrees. The blue needle has an angle of 45. The black is a vertical cut of 90. And the green is the other angle at 135. But like I said, I never even worry what the angles are. I just know that my machine's going to tell me what color needle to put in when I need it. These needles are uh, substantially shorter than your sewing machine needle. They are flat back, uh, so they will insert just like your sewing machine needle, but they're a little bit shorter. So that's uh, why they include a needle holder to help you insert those needles um, in place. The uh, MSRP on the Genomi Cut Work Kit is $399. So um, if you haven't got your Cut Work Kit, uh, make sure uh, you check with your dealer. I was browsing through some home decorating uh, catalogs and ran across these, uh, or a monogram pillow, and I thought this would be a wonderful project uh, to do reverse applique with the cut work kit. So uh, we're going to, uh, I'm going to show you how I created this reverse applique um, tonight. You can find the instructions on the Genomi website if you go to the Project Center, Webinars, and go down to the Alfresco Cutwork Pillow with Digitizer MBX, you'll see there's some project instructions. So in the project instructions, you'll get the uh, list of fabric and notions to make the pillows, the step-by-step -step digitizing directions, as well as instructions to make the pillow. And I also included a handy like cheat sheet that kind of gives a little explanation of each of the cutwork applications in the program. So of course before I started I installed the cutwork kit on my computer. And Digitizer comes with over 90 fonts built in. And we also can use true type fonts. So I explored the fonts in my computer, and I just wasn't finding one with enough curly cues and interesting things. So I did a little search on the internet, and I found this font called Parchment Regular. And I found it at a site called azfonts.net. So I simply downloaded it. and. When you download a font, it'll simply go into the font folder on your computer, and you'll be able to open it in Digitizer, as well as any other uh, program that you use that you need fonts, such as uh, word processing programs, uh, spreadsheets, whatever. So the font I'm using today is called Parchment Regular. So this was the pillow I created with the letter F for Fiedler. And, um, this is the pillow I used, or I created, uh, with the letter J for Genomi. And I have a little close-up here 
because what I wanted with the font that I chose was some areas that I could do reverse applique, so these kind of swirly S shapes that make the J, and then I wanted some really interesting details for my letter. So that's where I've got those swirls. I also thought it would be fun to create a buttonhole that I could simply embroider in the hoop and have the hole cut by the machine, and I'd be ready to insert my button. So I'm going to also show you how I made my buttonhole. So now I'm going to switch to digitizer. And I'm in easy design. Now, once you install the Cutwork program, there'll be a, some, a couple new tools. On the left-hand side, as I scroll down to my tools, I see a new tool right here. It shows the little scissors. And this is my Cutwork tool. Then in the Docker bar, which is right here, I have a little scissors. And this is the cut work application tool. So when I click that, on the right hand side of the screen, my cut work applications come out. And I can scroll down and see that there are several different applications. And this is the little cheat sheet that I included in your directions, just to give you a quick overview of what each one of these applications are. When you select an application, the background will turn blue, so you know that's the one you've selected. So H1 is the first one, and then on the right-hand side of each of these, it shows you what steps are in that application. And then on this side, next to it, these are my controls for each of the steps in the application. So for H1, this is going to create a hole that has covered edges. And it's going to be a satin stitch or a stem stitch only. So in this case, the first thing it would do would be a stabilizing run. And here it shows me that it defaults. It's going to make two passes. And it shows the distance from the line that I created. Then it shows the cutting blade. So the next thing is it would do the cut. Then in it has a, another tack down run. So if I wanted to place a piece of um, fabric for reverse applique underneath the hoop, or if I wanted to put a topping over my hole, I would want a tack down run. And once again, here's my controls. And then the final step would be embroidery. And in this case, it'll be a satin stitch or a um, stem stitch. If I click on H2, the background to turn blue, so I know it's selected. And this one also is going to be a hole with edges that are covered. A satin or stem stitch are the only stitches that are used with this. And this time it gives me the stabilizing run, which we need to hold the layers together before I cut, the cutting line, and then the embroidery. So I might use this if I was going to make eyelets and didn't need it. A, extra stabilizer. With H3, this adds a fourth or a fifth step. So of course it starts out with the stabilizing run, the cutting line, and the tack down line. And I put a little bit of stable uh, topping on my uh, project, and then it would give me a net fill. So that's why I need that stabilizer, because it's going to create net fill just with thread. And I can control that uh, size of the netting. I can change the angle if I wanted more of a diagonal stitches. So this gives me a really creative um, use. And then the final step would be, once again, a satin stitch or a stem stitch. All right, I'm going to slide down to the next group. Now, H4. This is going to give me a hole with non-covered edges. So in this case, I can use any type of an embroidery stitch. I could use a satin stitch, a stem stitch, or, as the picture indicates, maybe a motif stitch. 
So it's just going to sew the embroidery and then it would cut a hole. With H5, once again, this is a hole with non-covered edges. It's going to give me a stabilizing run, then the embroidery, and then the final cut. With P1, this is going to give me non-covered edges, but you notice it cuts on the outside of the stitching rather than the inside. So I would get a stabilizing run to hold my stabilizer and my fabric together. It'll do the embroidery. Now this one, um, with P1, I can only do a satin stitch or a stem stitch. You give me a stabilizing run again, and then the cutting line. I might use this particular design. Maybe I want to make a coaster, and I wanted the I didn't want uh, any uh, embroidery on the back side, so I could do the stabilizing run, my embroidery, then I could slip maybe a piece of um, felt on the bottom, it do another stabilizing run, and then cut out through, out through all the layers. I think you'll find lots of ways to use all of these once we start experimenting. With P2, this also is a cut work, which cuts on the outside uh, for using a satin stitch or st stem stitch. So it has a stabilizing run, the embroidery, and then the cutting line. P3 is going to allow me to use any type of embroidery. So I could use a decorative stitch as well as a satin stitch or a stem stitch. And P4 just does not have the stabilizing line that I had in uh, P2 and P3. Now, a quick way to find the application would be maybe to decide which type of stitch you want to use in the beginning. So if I click on this drop-down arrow where it says satin line, if I knew I wanted to start out, I wanted a motif line, it automatically shows me these are the only three choices that I can change the motif line in. If I chose the satin line, whoops, satin line, okay, I can choose any of the applications. I can also use it to just create a line with no embroidery. So if I click on no embroidery, I could draw a line and create an object that will just be cut. I'm going to switch back to my satin line. And once I have created the um, cut work object, if I want to change the details of the, of the embroidery, I click on this button in the cut work bar. I don't go to my object details like we do for regular embroidery designs. I go to this and it brings up the cut work embroidery property button. So this is a little explanation of how it all work. All right. So I just moved my little box out of the way there. All right. So I have selected the machine I'm going to work with, and I wanted this project fairly large, so I'm using the square 23 hoop. Of course, you can use any size hoop for whatever type of cut work you're doing. So for now, I'm going to use the um, square 23. And if I came over and used my lettering, it would automatically create the stitches. And cut work is a manual tool. So I uh, want to bring in a graphic of my letter. So the easiest way to do that is to just go to uh, Click, uh, switch to graphic mode. So I'm going to click on the little pencil and switch to my graphics mode. And it opened up uh, in Corel. So on the left-hand side, 
are my tools, and the letter A is my vector lettering. So I'm going to click on that. And once I've selected that across the top, I can find my fonts. And when I click on the drop down arrow, my font list will appear. Now, the fonts will come in alphabetically, so I could scroll down and find the parchment. But one nice thing is if you've been using a font several times, there's like a quick uh, pick little panel that appears at the top. So I'm going to just click on parchment. And since I want a really large letter, I'm going to change the size. So I'm going to go to font size. I'm going to choose 200 po points. I'm only going to make a single letter, so I'm just going to click kind of in the center of my paper here to get my cursor. And I thought for tonight I would use the letter L, so I'm going to put in an uppercase L. I don't want to add any more letters, so I'm going to come over to the left-hand side and click the little Select tool. So stop the cursor and select my design. Now this is a pretty small design and I, want, I really want it almost as big as my hoop. And I know that my hoop is about a 9 inch square, that's square 23. So I've decided I'm going to make my letter L 8 and a half inches tall or wide. So here is where I can control the size of my object. And if I just typed in 8.5, I would get the width and I'd have to do it again for the height. But next to the uh, size, there's a little padlock and it's the lock ratio. And it's unlocked right now. So if I click on it and lock it, now if I type in 8.5 and hit enter, it'll grow my design equally. Now I want to make sure it's centered on my piece of paper because then it will automatically center in the hoop. So I'm going to come up to Arrange, Align and Distribute, and Center to Page. So it's just that simple. I'm just going to scroll out a little bit with my mouse so I can see my whole letter there. Looks pretty good. All right, I'm going to make sure my letter is selected. And I want to go back to Digitizer now, but I, wanted, I don't want to create any stitches. So I'm not going to click on the Convert uh, Selected Graphics to Embroidery or Convert Selected Text to Embroidery. I just want the graphic in my hoop. So I'm simply going to click on Switch to Embroidery Mode. And there it is. Now I'm going to start creating my design. Since I want to do um, reverse applique, I want to use H1. Now I'm going to use the scroll on my mouse and I'm going to scroll in on this small S shape. Because when I analyze this design, I know that I'm really going to make three cut cut work objects here, each of these kind of S shapes, and the rest will just be uh, stitches. So I'm going to use the scroll on my mouse and scroll in nice and big. I find sometimes uh, I find myself working a little bit too far away and straining on my eye, so I like to work nice and big. So I've got my application selected that I want, H1, and now I'm going to come over and I'm going to select my Digitize Cutwork tool. Now left clicks give me points and straight lines and right clicks give me curves. So I'm going to start with a left click at the point and I'm going to do some right clicks around my curve. I'm going to left click at the point and do some more right clicks. Now with the cut work, you have to complete the object. So I'm going to come up where I started and left click and then press enter on the keyboard. And here's my first object. 
now I'm going to um, do a little slow redraw so that you can see exactly how this is going to stitch up. I'm going to turn off my visualizer. I'm going to turn on slow redraw. I'm going to slow it down a little bit so you can actually see what's happening. And give it a start. Okay, so here's the first, and it's coming around, and that's my stabilizing line. And it's going to go do two of those. Now it's doing the cutting line. So see how it's jumping a little bit? Because it's doing different colored blades. Now it's finishing, or it's being the second stabilizing line. And the second stitch. All right. So that's how it's going to, to, to sew. All right, so we have our first cut object. Now let's make a second one, and it's the same process. I'm going to click on my tool, left click to get a point, do some right clicks, left click, right clicks on the curves, and end with a left click and press Enter. If I'm not quite happy with my shape, I simply need to select my tool, so I touch the little finger, and then across the tools on the bottom, the fourth one from the left is my reshape objects. When I click on that, the little nodes appear that let me change the shapes of these lines, so I can reshape however I need to get my design to look exactly how I want, want it. All right, and then touch the select key to turn that off. I'll turn my visualizer back on, so I'm going to click on the little eyeglasses, and I can see my sat stitches. Now, on, I'm going to touch the um, letter zero to zoom back to see everything, or the number zero, and to, to do a little analyzing of my design. So these S's kind of stand independently, and this kind of S shape has a long tail. And I discovered that when I'm doing the cut work, it doesn't want to make long tails. So I need to stop right about here, which will be okay because then I can use my tools. I'm going to draw the rest of my lines to finish the tail. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit, get my tool, left click for my point, and follow with the right clicks for my curves. So I'm right clicking, come to my point, and left click, and press Enter. Whoops, I must have bumped something. Okay, we'll try that again. Right click, left click at the point, right click, and left click, and Enter. There we go. And if I once again need to do a little reshaping, this tail came in a little too far, I simply select it with the Select tool, click on the reshape objects, and shape it as I need to. If I want to take a node out, like this one, I probably don't need it. If I select it, and I can touch Delete on the keyboard to straighten it out. All right, and I'm just touch select to turn off the uh, that function, and I have my cut work objects. Now, to make the tail, I'll just make a few tails so we can see how this works. I found that the best tool for all these curly cues was the turning angle tool. So on the left hand side, we have the turning angle tool. So I click on that. And I want the satin stitch, so when I click on the uh, dropout arrow, I'll get my turning angle satin fill. And 
This happens to be one of my very favorite tools because it allows me to change the angle of the stitch as I'm building the object. So I'm going to left click on kind of at the top of that curve and then on the right hand side which is kind of the bottom. Now I'm going to right click to get curves. So I'm going to the top and to the right. So you see how you go back the same direction you started on to make the curve. To get a nice little point, I'm going to left click and then press enter on the keyboard. I'm going to select it. I'm going to turn on that reshape object to show you that when you're using the um, turning angle tool, you can actually change the angle of the stitches because you have both the nodes on both sides and that's why it's called turning angle and you can shape this exactly how you want. I'm going to touch select and touch the letter zero so we can see the whole design. I found it easier when I was doing this particular project because there's lots of little bits and pieces that once I started doing all of my swirls, I made each swirl a different color. That way when I had to work with them, um, edit them or whatever I wanted to do, it was easy to tell which swirls went together. So I'm going to minimize this window and open up the one that I had previously worked on. So you can see how I determined which swirls kind of went together and made them each individual color while I was building the project. Also, just because this was a really intricate design and I thought it had lots of possibilities, you'll see that I, I started and stopped at different places so that the ribbons looked like they were kind of weaving in and out of each other. So this took, takes a little bit of time, but it's just a really a lot of fun. But what I wanted to show you was how I created these, these little bubble effects with the turning angle tool. They're not hard, uh, but they just took a little thought process. So I'll go ahead and pick this peony pink because that's the continuation of this swirl and get my turning angle satin fill. And I found when I did bubbles that they worked the best if I actually put in at least three of the round points. Whoops, I, now I, made, I went in the wrong angle, so I'm going to hit the backspace to back up. Okay. I want to go left click, left click, because I need those points. So then I made, oops, I think I went back again. Yes, I did. There we go get my rhythm going the right way. So to get the best curves, I actually had to do like at least three or four um, passes in here. Now, this kind of moon shape really isn't going to, uh, I'm not going to be able to use that turning angle tool to make it. So I'm just going to make it a big bubble. That's the best part of being able to draw your own objects is you can really make them any shape you want. So I'm just going to continue on making like a bubble shape here. So I'm left clicking when I get to the straight lines and right clicking on those bubble bits. Whoops, backspace. When I make a mistake. It's easy to get out of these. And I'll quickly do my curve. To get to this last bubble. Now, on a lot of my ribbons, because they came to points, I always ended with a left click. But on these, I found that I ended with to right clicks, I end up with a nice round end. 
just like that. So I pressed enter at the end to create my design. Now, sometimes when you uh, make wide satin stitches, you will get the dimples. And to eliminate the dimple, I'm going to select that object, and I'm going to go to my object details. When you do a satin stitch, um, Digitizer wants to um, split it more than a quarter of a stitch, uh, inch. So I want to turn off auto split and make a satin stitch. All right. Okay, so now I have my design. Now, the next thing you need to do when you're doing cut work after you've created your design is you need to save it as a JAN file. The reason you need to do this is you cannot edit cut work designs in the machine or in any other software because if you do, the cutting angles may not be right. There might not be enough cutting. So the reason you want to save it as a JAN file is if I want to come back here and make this uh, a uh, much smaller, much larger, or do any major changes. Uh, if I was doing cut work and I wanted to mirror image it, I'd need that JAN file so I could make those changes and not lose the integrity of the design. So make sure you always, on any of your cut work designs, save them as a JAN. So I save my little fancy L as JAN. Now, the next thing is the MemoryCraft 15,000 is the only machine that's going to actually know that it's doing cut work. All of the other machines are going to read the needle changes as color changes. So I might need a road map to know exactly what I was doing. So if I go to my file and print preview, in the print function, I can print this road map. So you want to make sure in your options that you have the design worksheet um, selected to give me all of my changes. And when I'm looking at this here, I can see that right now, here's my tack stitch. I would change to those four cutting blades, a tack stitch, four cutting blades, a tack stitch, four cutting blades. So there's lots of changing of needles on this particular project. So I'm going to show you how you can combine those. So I'm going to close this window. I'm going to come back to my design. And I'm going to select, I'm going to hold down my control, and I'm going to select my three cut work objects. So those are those three red S shapes. And when I do that, let's see. I'm sorry, hold shift and the three, OK? On my cut work bar, it's popped up and says Combine Selected. So when I click on Combine Selected, now when I return to that print preview, it has combined those um, uh, the, the objects I selected. I must have missed one, so let me close this and go back and try one more time. I'm going to show off the visualizer. It'll be a little easier for me to see what I've selected. So I'm going to hold Shift, and I'm going to select those three cut work objects. Whoops, wait a minute. Click off. This guy, this guy, and this one. Okay, combine selected. Okay, there they are. So now it's taken those three objects, and I would only have to cut the, change those cutting blades one time. It would go from object to object to object. So that's how you're going to combine multiple cutting objects within one hooping. Now, the final thing I would do before I would want to uh, sew this is I want to select all. And I could change it to any color. I want to turn off the uh, vector background. And whoops, I still didn't get select all. 
Oh, yes, it did. There we go. So there would be my design. If I turn on my visualizer, I can see there's my whole design. And then once you've got that uh, ready to go, I could write it to my external media. and send it to my jump drive. And the, the program will send it in the appropriate format for the machine that you have selected. So for the memory craft 15,000, 12,000, and 9,900, it will send it as a JPX. And for all the rest of your Genome embroidery machines, it will send it as a .jeff. All right, now let me show you how simple it was to make my buttonhole. So I'm going to go to New, and I'm going to change to the small free arm hoop. Because when you're cutting, you want to have uh, lots of stability uh, of the hoop and the fabric. So for buttonhole, I'm going to use the free arm hoop because it's very tiny. It's going to hold the fabric nice and tight. And I decided I would still use the application one because this time I want to put a little bit piece of topping over the top after it's done the cut before it does my satin stitch. So I'm going to do H1. I'm going to select my cut work tool again. I'm going to hold the control key and I'm going to click on one of those intersections. I'm not going to worry how big the buttonhole is right now because I can change that in my object details. I'm just going to move to the right, click on another intersection, go down, over, and finish. And I'm going to press Enter. So now I'm going to select it and go to my object uh, details. I knew that I wanted to make the buttonhole uh, large enough for a one-inch button, so I'm going to make the width 1.25. The height I'm going to manually adjust once I see it, so I'm going to just change the width and click OK. I'm going to zoom in, and then I'm going to use the, the little nodes, and I'm going to bring those two long edges of my buttonhole nice and close together so that they're almost touching. If I turn off my visualizer and zoom in, see they're just almost kissing there. And that's where I want them. If I need to straighten it out, I can touch my reshape object and bring this end in just a little bit. Okay. Touch it, select it again. Then the last thing I want to do is I want to make sure it's in the middle of my hoop. On your uh, screen, um, you want to find your easy layout. If, it does, if these buttons don't appear, if you simply right click in a gray area and make sure you have a check mark by easy layout. Then I'm going to click on the move to center and hit the green button to center it. And I'll zoom back. And there is my buttonhole. What's so fun about being able to create these things in Digitizer is we can add embellishments or anything we want. So that's why I decided to do add a little embellishment to the buttonholes to make them very fancy on the back of the pillow. So from the Docker bar, I want to select the Embroidery Gallery. And in the embroidery gallery, we have over 146 motifs to choose from. Now, they are listed alphabetically. So the one I wanted was called Ornament 3. So I'm going to slide down really quickly to the O's. Okay. And here's Ornament 3. And I'm going to click on it. Now, when you're using the embroidery gallery, what these are are little stamps. So they're ready-made stamps to add em look, little embellishments. If I left click once, it has anchored that point. 
So I can turn this any way I want. So I'm going to turn it down and I'm going to left click again to create the little wave. I don't need the stamp anymore, so I'm simply going to touch Escape on the keyboard, select this, and resize. The best part about this is you can make them any size you want, any angle you want, just by playing with it a little bit. Okay. Now I want to put another motif on opposite side, so I make sure it's selected. I want to copy. I'm going to paste. Now it pasted right on top of the first one, so if I come to my editing toolbars on the bottom, I'm going to simply click the flip horizontal so I can see which one it is and use the arrows on my keyboard to move it over. Pretty simple. Whoops, I'm losing my design. Okay, there we go. Sorry. I'm going to touch the number zero to zoom back to see the whole design. Turn on my visualizer. And there's my buttonhole. Very simple. Once again, do a save as. Make sure you save it as a GN file because I want to come back and make a bigger or smaller buttonhole. I want the original file to work with. And then once again, I could write it to my external media. I did want to share with my uh, MemoryCraft 15,000 owners how you can send it wirelessly from Digitizer. In the background, I've already uh, opened uh, Horizon Link Suite, so it's just been resting in the background. And across the top, I have an icon that says Send to Embroidery Link Tool. So I can click on this. And it's going to automatically open it up in Easy Edit. And so from here, I can simply check my connection settings, do a little search, make sure that's talking to my machine. And then simply hit the send button and it would write that over to my sewing machine, which it's doing right now. All right. So I, um, I hope uh, lots of uses for all of these applications. I know it's, I've just touched the tip of the iceberg with the reverse applique. So these were the two pillows I created. So now I want to explain to you how it's going to work once it's in the sewing machine. The MemoryCraft 15,000, like I said, when you uh, send it over or write to the card, it's going to go over as a .jpx. You always want to do cut work in the MemoryCraft 15,000 as a .jpx so that the machine recognizes the cut work uh, needles. And when you open a file in the MemoryCraft 15,000, there's two ways to view the designs. If the small thumbnail choice has been selected, you'll just see little individual um, pictures or thumbnails of the designs. If the large thumbnail version has been chosen, you'll see a picture of the design as well as a little icon that shows you what type of stitch it is. So for the cut work, you'll actually see an icon that shows like the teardrops where one has been cut away. For the MemoryCraft 12,000 and 9,900, you'll send them over as .jpx, but these machines will not recognize the needles. They'll still see the uh, color changes as thread colors, and you'll you just change the needles at the appropriate time. For all your other Genomi machines, you're going to sit the, save the file as a .jeff.
Now, once you've opened the design with the MemoryCraft 15,000, at the appropriate time, it's actually going to display the cutwork needles. So here's just a little picture of the front of the machine, and it shows color number one and two were embroidery thread. But the next three sections actually show that they're going to use the cutting blade. And when it gets to, in this case, color three, a pop-up window will appear on the machine, and it actually tells you to change to the cutwork needle. And the machine will automatically lock itself so that you can't accidentally um, hit the start button uh, while you're changing that needle. MemoryCraft 15000 will also turn off the thread sensor and the jump thread trimming when the cutwork needles are functioning. And then after you've done all the cutting, the machine is going to give you a new message that's going to tell you to sew, put your sewing needle back in. So it's very helpful. I never get lost. And then it also turns the thread sensors and the jump thread trimming back on. If you're doing cut work with the MemoryCraft 12,000 and 9900, you can manually turn off your upper thread sensor. So to do that, you would go to the set function. Under the common set, you will turn to the page to find the upper thread sensor and simply turn it off and touch OK. Then once you've done the cut work, you want to go back in and turn that upper thread sensor back on. On your other Chinomi embroidery machines, we're going to have to trick the machine into sewing without thread. And this is really simple to do. If Take a piece of uh, card stock or maybe an old credit card. Fold the card stock in half. And then you're going to unthread the machine. And on that first side, the right-hand side of the thread path, you're going to insert the cardstock or the credit card. And you're going to just gently insert it until it activates the thread sensor. Then once the cutting portion is done, you'll take the card out and rethread the machine. So what happens is that's why you want that little map that you've print so that after you know which colors are when you need to put in the cutting blades. Now to do the little uh, reverse applique, you can see in picture one the machine had done the stabilizing stitch and then it did the cutting. After the cut work needles have done the cutting and the machine has stopped, you simply carefully remove the hoop from the machine, and there will be maybe two threads that are holding that little piece in place. Simply snip those threads with a real sharp pair of embroidery scissors, and that piece will fall right out. Then for the reverse applique, I simply turned the hoop upside down. I used some the web bond uh, temporary adhesive put a light mist on the back of the hoop, adhered my fabric in place, then turn the hoop back over, reattach it to the machine, and simply hit the start button. And I'll finish the embroidery. The buttonholes are really done in the same way, but instead of placing the fabric on the wrong side of the hoop, I simply placed the water soluble stabilizer on top. And then it did the satin stitch and decorative stitches to complete it. And there's a close up of my buttonhole. I really like how these buttonholes sewed out. Just gave me an elegant touch to my um, uh, design. Okay, I want to check and see if there were any questions, and I've lost my um, screen here, so I just want to see if I had any um, things I missed to answer. Um, okay, I have a question. 
uh, what format to use for the MB4. You would use the GEF format. And uh, 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 the, so because it's the, it, the machine really doesn't um, need to know that it's cutting. It's just going to give you a color change. And once again, on the MB4, if you printed out your map, you'll know when to put in or which, which needle would go in what position. Because you had needles one, two, three, and four. And you would just put your uh, needles in in the position. And then the machine would um, cut at the appropriate time. Um, let's see. I think, think, think that's my only question. I'm just double checking here. All right. Um, I wanted to mention that if you want to see these um, samples um, live, they're traveling with the Genomi Alfresco Trunk Show. Um, so check with your dealer to see if they're hosting an Alfresco event. Um, I have uh, really been enjoying working with this cut work kit. Um, I have a couple other ideas of things to make and just haven't sat down to do them. But I'm sure after you've created your first project, um, you'll come up with all kinds of creative ways to do this. Um, there's another question. It says, can I use professional design to cut work designs on the 15,000? Um, the cut work designs that are already digitized um, from other sources, and I think this is the question I'm getting, the, um, they won't have the cutting lines in them. Those are designed to actually cut. Um, so you can use them, but the cutting needles will be of no use. There'll be no place on those to add them. Um, I haven't um, figured out a way to um, uh, take an, uh, I just haven't taken a, a ready-made cut work design and added cut work lines to them yet. Um, so I think it would just be something to experiment with. But any of the, any pre-digitized designs from any designers out there right now do not have the cutting lines in them. They're meant to cut with the scissors. Um, I uh, want to thank everybody for um, joining and uh, hope you um, learned a, a few things. If you have any uh, questions, please send them to the Genomi webinar at genomi-america.com. And uh, thank you so much. Make sure and visit your dealer if you haven't purchased the Cutwork Kit. You're going to love it.